So first thing, first um, you need to understand where to find the REST API code. Um, so if you already know, uh, there is a SRC folder where the complete source is there. Under that, there will be WW, uh, then UI, and then API. So all of the REST API code resides here. And first thing I would recommend is to go through this open API YAML. Uh, <clears throat> if you are uh, comfortable with it, um, you can read it from here or there is also. Uh, Swagger API, so let me just start that. Uh, what you can do is uh, go to editor.swagger.io. Uh, it will load the same thing and I just uh, prefer to run it locally. So it is currently booting up. Yeah, there it is. Um, so take this YAML file. Go to editor.swagger.io or run it locally, whatever you prefer. And then simply paste it here. Then on the right, uh, it will load all the APIs uh, organized under different uh, groups. So here. You can run the REST API or you can make the REST API calls or you can install some tool like uh, Postman or I just installed this tool called Hopscotch. Uh, whatever you prefer will work. You can also use it directly from here. So uh, first thing you need to do uh, before calling any REST API is you need to have a token. So the easiest way is to go to Fossology UI, do a login, then admin, users, edit user account. And if you scroll down, there will be a section called create a new token. And in case this is not visible for you, uh, what you need to do is um, open this file called etc uh, sorry uh, it's a local installation so it will be under user local etc fossology fossology.conf go to this path and scroll to bottom there will be a section called authentication and under there there will be a variable called rest token so just make sure it is on token or both if it is on oauth you will not get that section in the ui um, just edit your file, save it, come back here and reload the page. Uh, you will see uh, this section again. Just give it a name when it, you want it to expire. By default, you can uh, make it for up to 30 days. Uh, give it a access scope. So generally go for read write. Uh, with read only, you cannot do any port or post put. Uh, such request only get request is allowed. Uh, if you already have tokens active, it will come under here active access token and you can reveal a token and just copy it. Um, then whatever uh, tool you are using postman, hopscotch, swagger editor, there will be a section for authorization. If you just go to authorize and over here look out for bearer auth and just paste whatever token you have click authorize so now if you see the padlock uh, is closed over here um, and to check it out you can either do a call on info execute you should see a result and if you really want to make sure that the token you have generated is correct, just do a call to this user slash self. Try it out, execute. It should show your username over here. So from whichever user you have logged in. So I have logged in from Fossey. Uh, I am seeing Fossey over here. OK. Uh, let me do the same over here in Hopscotch. It will be similar to Postman. Uh, sorry, for Postman. 
user slash self. Go to authorize. Uh, authorization type here will be bearer token. And auth actually contains my uh, token. What I just have copied. Hit send. I will see this response. OK, now how this thing is working, how the routing is working. Uh, to start with the very basic. Every request in Fosology comes uh, via Apache server, so under ETC Apache 2, uh, there will be a folder called sites enabled and there will be a Fosology conf file. And if you look under it, uh, it by default has an alias on slash repo, which forwards the request to the UI folder. Um, and there is a mod uh, rewrite and it checks if a request starts with API followed by anything. Instead of uh, using the index file at the UI, it redirects the call to repo slash API slash index.php internally. Um, so with this, uh, you know where the call goes under API. There is a file called index.php over here. Uh, let me close this Apache file and let's examine this uh, index.php. So uh, it is uh, as a concept called as a router file. So uh, line by line, let's examine it a bit uh, how it works. So first thing, um, this is just uh, a thing which exists, but we don't use it anywhere. Uh, there is a global variable called API call. So at any point within the code, if you want to check the request is coming from the REST API or from the UI, uh, you can just check uh, this variable. And if it holds true, that means the call is coming from REST API. Uh, then we load this uh, vendor uh, auto load. So this is a file created by Composer and it actually resides under vendor. You don't need to bother much about it. There is a file called autoload.php and it just makes sure whenever you import a class somewhere, uh, which file inside the PHP should get loaded. It takes care of it. Um, then there is a bootstrap.php. So let's quickly have a look at it bootstrap.php why it's running so slow uh, lib slash php if it helps no uh, faster <laughs> i i can just scroll uh lib php bootstrap.php so this file is internal to Fosology. It um, checks this folder etc Fosology, loads up the Fosology.conf, um, and import whatever plugin is required. Okay, so uh, inside your Fosology.conf, which we just opened, uh, no wrong file. Uh, user local etc fosology fosology.conf so these things are you know your variables so because of this bootstrap uh, you can read everything using this sysconf variable so maybe i can come back to it later and show you how it is done or uh, how it is used at one particular location then after bootstrapping we import all the classes we need um, and then set up our base path. So every API request should start with this particular string uh, and rest version currently is version one. So we are expecting after the GSOC we can have a version two. Um, then we call the bootstrap function we just saw and start some logging. Uh, then we load the twig templates uh, because some of the agent do need it. Um, and 
load up our sysconf dir and do the config in it. So this config in it will translate this fossology.conf into your global variables, what you have seen. Uh, then there is some check for database connectivity. Uh, and only if database is running, all the plugins are loaded. Otherwise, uh, there is no uh, you know, usefulness to call the plugin load because they will fail anyway. Um, then we have uh, this thing coming from the slim uh, framework. And this is our uh, main router variable. So for this, we set the base path what we uh, have defined over here. So we don't need to type it again and again in, inside the code. Uh, then there are some middlewares. So you can check out this particular document how middleware work. Um, but as a small gist, so whenever a call comes to a server. So let's say this is our server and someone is uh, making a call to it. Uh, before directly executing whatever we want. Um, we add some. Layers uh, in between. And then this is our main code, whatever we want to run. So with with this middlewares uh, call will flow something like this. Uh, and uh, after executing our code, the call will return back in this fashion going again via those. Uh, middlewares and then finally to the client. So over there we have fossology init middleware, uh, which is to initialize all the plugins. Then we have a uh, rest auth middleware which is to authenticate the user. Right, so we use this uh, bearer token and now there is also OAuth. So all that authentication is done here and then uh, there is a content length middleware. So this is just to make the response nice. Uh, and they will be executed top to bottom. So this will be executed first. Um, then this will be executed second and then this will be executed third and then the actual logic will be executed and the call will return back. Um, then this middleware. Whoops. Um, then this middleware. Then. This middleware. And then it will go back to the response. So uh, we'll check how the middlewares are coded later. Um, then if in case the database is not running, we cannot process any request and we check if the user is actually asking for a health endpoint. So let me very quickly show you what it does. Uh, should be at the top somewhere. So this is just to check whether the scheduler and the database are running or not. So since database is not running and user is asking for a health, uh, we can say that the database is not running. For any other request which is not for health, we return a response of 503 unable to connect to database. OK. Then once all these things are done with the middleware, we come to our first logic. So you see most uh, of this uh, of this file is divided into sections. So first is uh, for option. So this is very specific to uh, cores. Um, then we have the auth endpoint. So uh, over the auth endpoint, you can generate new uh, REST API tokens. So the Fossology UI uses this uh, auth endpoint to create a token whenever you enter your username and password. Uh, then we have different sections for upload, uh, admin stuff, group stuff, job, search, and everything. 
and if you look at these things so for example let's take the exam uh, folder section uh, it is under a thing called as group so with group we say it should start with slash folder and anything inside that we create a local route proxy uh, inside the route proxy we say if you get a get request someone did a get request and it matches this regular expression then what to do take up this class and inside this class call this particular folder similarly if there is a post request it should not contain anything in the path from this class called this create folder and at the end we have any so in case user did a wrong request which we do not process it will go to any and it will be handled by bad request controller and we say you have sent a wrong request to us um, so this is defined over here custom error handler uh, you can check that out not a big thing uh, then there is also a catch all route if in case someone sent in a request which we do not have a route for so within this nothing matches uh, we simply sent a 404 resource not found uh, and then we just uh, after everything is initialized we call app uh, run and it, it starts working so let's take an example of get folder so uh, again on the rest api side uh, on this left hand uh, it is also divided into different sections so first is called controller um, second one is called helper and third one is called middleware and fourth one is called model so under controller uh, we have uh, you can say mm, this will uh, this will be the input it will take your request it will process it and generate a response um, with uh, with the helper uh, we have some common utility functions you can call it utils or library for middleware uh, i just explain what middleware is and model is your uh, json object so whatever uh, response is sent out it first becomes a model inside php and then that is parsed to a json and then sent back as a response to the user so uh, also in the naming convention you can see it's called as folder controller so it should definitely reside under controllers so if i open controller there is my folder controller and if i open this file um, again you will see first thing this class extends another class the rest controller and if you open this rest controller uh, it gives you some thing already defined so it makes the job easier so first thing inside the constructor three objects are initialized the container the rest helper and the db helper um, i'll come back to container uh, in a bit so first is your rest helper so rest helper will give you access to this helper functions um, and why it is done like that and not directly imported because they need some uh, you know some initialization for example a connection to the database and you don't want to do it again and, and again so it is uh, initialized at once similarly you have a dedicated option for db helper because most of the controller are going to use it and if you can see it actually comes from the rest helper itself um, and then there is a helper function called get pass body 
so if someone has sent a post request uh, we can uh, parse it as a json and return the response if it is not a json it is something else so we use the internal function provided by uh, slim get pass body okay uh, i'll take a small detour for the container because it is a you know very core thing and if you don't need it you will get lost uh, from where something is coming up so there is uh, this thing called as dependency injection uh, and if you come under lib php you will find a file called services.xml and if you open it uh, here our container is created and what container does it say provide me all these services so as service uh, it is meant that i need access to these particular objects so please create a instance of them inside php for me so i don't have to create them uh, whenever i need so you see each one of them have a id and a corresponding class so what dependency injection will do it will take this particular class it will pass these arguments to its constructor create an object and give it a particular id then whenever you need this particular object you can simply do container get and that particular id so for example the id used here is helper dot rest helper and if i just search it over here you see it comes from a rest helper class and it uh, provides all these uh, things as an argument which themselves are different services defined inside this very same class so somewhere in the code you might have seen uh, let me do a search uh, dow dot folder uh, and for example it is used here so someone needed uh, this class folder dow they just call uh, get object get object um, will call it uh, on the container and give you that particular object and then you can do a call on that so if this thing is making you confused just let me know um, as we progress i'll come back to it again so any any questions at this moment if not then let's continue with the folder controller and what we were looking is at the get request of the folder container so uh, if you come back to swagger editor and look out for folder so this is the folders and uh, where is the get request for it ah yeah under folders so there are two kind of get requests so first is plain get request on slash folder and second one is folder slash a particular id so what we did here we created a regular expression and we say there can be zero or more integers and if they exist put them on a variable called id and this whole thing is optional right uh, as mentioned here it can be simply slash folders or it can be folder slash some particular id so this will capture it as an argument and pass the call to get folders so if we come back to folder controller this is our get folder uh, function then we see three arguments it takes first is the request the response and the argument 
so inside slim framework we never return something uh, directly we take whatever response object is coming along and we just append on top of it whatever we are doing um, and then this is uh, your raw request which came from the user and this is your argument so this argument will hold whatever matches over here in the regular expression so you see i called this uh, integer whatever matches over here as id so i can read it over here as args of id so uh, yeah so what i did first i got the folder dao uh, we'll see why and then i check if the user has provided any id for me uh, then i'll take this route if the user has not provided me any id i'll take this route so let's take the simple example where user has provided me an id so what i just do so by default this thing is a string and we translate it into a integer just for a sanity check and then with the folder dao we check if the user can actually access it or not first of all uh, because we do not want to provide any information which is not accessible by the user so then comes the question what is dao so if uh, you have taken this computer science or any related course in your bachelor degree you might have learned about these different layers so dao is called data access uh, object and inside libphp we have this folder called dao and you will find all the daos which are used by fosology and they are logically separated so for example if something is required from folder and you need to fetch it from the database you call folder dao if you want something from the upload there is a upload dao so let's uh, open folder dao and look out for this function called is folder accessible so what this function does it checks your user id and it checks your root folder it lists all the folders you can access and it iterates through them and check whether the folder id you are requesting for is in the list or not so if it is in the list then you can access it otherwise it will return false so such uh, common task you will always find inside libphp dao um, there can be some inside application business rule so before writing any of your own logic always check out this folder lib php so over here we say okay user can access this folder or not if it cannot access uh, we have a standard reply from this object called info and this is a model actually and i'll come back to it and then we initialize with a response code 403 and say this is not accessible to you and it is of type error uh, and then we use this uh, return value. Then second thing is checked here. A folder actually does exist or not. So it again calls folder out. And if I see you this uh, show you this folder. Uh, it actually runs a SQL query on the database. And it creates a fossology internal object and returns it to you. So if the folder exists it will return a folder otherwise it will return null so some something like that you can check uh, whether the folder exists or not and uh, such permutations you can create um, then if there is any error we simply response with uh, whatever object we have created um, calling this get array and get code if everything is going good um, we just return um, this folder uh, we create this array all user folders and with that particular id that yeah everything went through 
and then we call some more DAO, uh, you know, some more function calls from DAO. We create a model out of the folder and we return the response. So uh, let's see how model works now. So uh, I hope um, the logic of the controller is clear to you. If, if there is any question over here, please ask. Otherwise, we'll go and check out the models. OK. Uh, then coming to models. So for whatever response you are getting inside this YAML file, if you expand it, scroll down there is a json response and if you check the yaml file this is uh, everything should be defined under the section called components schemas um, for example there is this license decider so whenever some uh, rest endpoint returns something we want to maintain this particular format there should be a key called no more wrong. There should be a key called re, uh, bulk reused, and it should always be a boolean. So how we can enforce that? So we create models for it. So for example, we are getting folder over here. So if I open the model for folder, uh, it is a very basic thing, and technically it is also called. Uh, in in other language like java it's called pojo like plain java object so you can also call it something like plain php object and its only task is to hold some information so if i look out for folder uh, folder colon so this is the folder uh, object we want to return and it always contain a id which is an integer name as a string description as a string parent as an integer so we want these four properties to exist inside this model so we create four private objects um, and then a constructor for it so whenever someone wants they can just call new folder pass on these four values we do a sanity check, a filter, and then initialize this. Um, then very common thing from all languages, there are getters, there are setters, uh, and a specific thing for Fosology, all of the model will have this function called get array. So what this get array do, it takes this model, and since you know this is a plain variable I can call it literally anything uh, but in my rest API response I want it to be specifically called as parent that to all is small so that we enforce over here so it creates a PHP array packs everything nicely for us and returns now question come why we are creating it as a, a PHP array uh, it's because we can use this model. We can get the array PHP array and we can use this helper function called with JSON. So with JSON is uh, defined in our response helper, which is again a slim helper uh, written by us. And what it does, it takes your PHP array, encodes it into JSON and adds this header content type application JSON. So whenever you are responding with a JSON uh, object, all you just need to do on your model call get array, pass the data to with JSON, and it will create a proper response for you. Um, then coming to response, why you see two parameters over here or similarly, um, this info, if you see, um, first first parameter to which JSON will actually hold the content of your response, and the second parameter will hold the response code. 
So if you see in your swagger, this is the response code on the left. This is the response data. And by default, uh, everything returned is uh, it, it can literally be uh, any other response. For example, 400, 401, 500, something. So this is a general flow how you how your request comes to the router, how router understands which particular function to call. Uh, it passes the call to the controller. The controller takes the uh, you know parameters from the call. It performs a sanity check before returning any response. Then you create models for whatever you want to respond to, and then you simply do response with JSON. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, so if we have to uh, define mm -hmm. multiple error codes, we will define yeah. it in the controller itself, right? Yeah, so you can see, for example, there is a error code 403 and 404. Yep, yep, so yep. Got it, got it. You can use uh, define it inside the controller or you can move it to helper. So for example, I mean, um, I mean for an, mm -hmm. a particular API, there must be something, some parameters should be passed. If the user doesn't Correct. pass as a parameter, so there should be a different kind of error rather than an internet connection error. So Absolutely. different user code should there. OK, yeah. I got it, I got it. Yeah. Um, so for example, uh, since user can do multiple forms of upload, so uh, to do a check on that, we move the code to upload helper. So this is to sanitize the version control data. And whenever something is wrong, we uh, define the response code here. Uh, and create a model of it. And then return it to the controller. Then controller see OK, something went wrong. And it sends out the error code. Yep, then yep. any more questions? OK. Uh, then maybe since the time is less, um, if you want to you know, experiment with this thing, you are creating a new REST API. Uh, sorry, rest endpoint. Um, you know, you need to put uh, the route for it in the index.php, create a corresponding controller, or if controller already exists, create a corresponding folder, make your changes. And since your changes are restricted to this WW uh, folder, you can simply make a call to sudo make install ww and then make sure to add this empty cache otherwise you may see old response which you are not expecting so this will be finish off very quickly instead of calling sudo make install which will install the complete fossology all over again for you um, one tip is that second uh, Secondly, if something you are changing in the library, some scenario may come. So similarly, uh, as we did with WW, uh, with this call, you can just add install lib to the same command. It will install both WW first and then the library. And then perform the cache cleaning. So you can combine installs uh, like that if you if you want to. Uh, and. One more thing I would like to suggest is check out this thing called PHP X debug. 
uh, which is a very good debugger and you can if you are using vs code they have a very nice integration uh, you can follow any of the blog you find out uh, and with help of it what you can do if you come to your run and debug in vs code um, check out listen for x debug start a debugger uh, i think i need to make a change apache debug so this is a command i wrote uh, <laughs> don't worry about if you don't find it and let me quickly restart it have a question. Yeah, please. Okay, so I I have like two questions I would like to ask. So, uh, okay, the first one it's about the learning test. So before like pushing you, uh, like for example, like you made mm -hmm. a new endpoint, like before pushing it, do you like run some test before? Yeah, some test on it, or you just like test it on uh, on Swag API and you check if it works. If the, if you get the expected result, then you push. Uh, actually, just like how do you? Okay. Uh, how, how is that work from? Then? Okay. So for the test, we actually have this UI underscore test, and under there there is a API. Uh, okay. If you are comfortable with writing unit test code, uh, you can write your test code over here. You can check out how uh, existing test codes are there. Yeah. Uh, with that, you can write your own test code. Or yeah. you just uh, run it from your uh, Swagger API and see the response you are getting is what you expect. Yeah, sure. So the second question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have I have another question like on database. So like this is like a kind of like high level project. So it's uh, I actually just like wondered where you just like hide the DB the database. I actually just wondered if like I can if I can like uh, I can like find data or like on PHP my admin. So like how mm -hmm. can I just like interact more closely with the database? So yeah, on that part we actually just need much help on it. OK, so I think for that we need another call because the database is a bit complex. Sure. Um, and for that we uh, I need to explain you different tables and what different kind of data they hold. OK. OK. Yeah, sure, I get it. Uh, so yeah, one thing I wanted to show you all is this X debug and how it is very helpful so now i am uh, running my debugger and i have set up a breakpoint over here uh, on get folder so if i go to swagger and i call this uh, api endpoint oh something did not went as expected debug Okay, what went wrong? Unverified breakpoint. So, okay, for some reason it's not working. Uh, what ideally will happen? Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, now now I get it. Why oh, it's not working? I need to make this call called x debug underscore break. And whenever you want a breakpoint. Uh, you just call this function. Uh, make sudo make install ww like install this code. And then if you run it. Yeah, it comes to this breakpoint and now what you can do, you can go through line by line and see how your code flows. Uh, for example, I see my folder DAO is initialized over here. Um, then I check. Uh, args of ID is set or not. So I can also go to debug console and do something like where dump. Oops, uh, where dump on dollar args and I can see what args hold. So currently it is null. Uh, then I can go one more level 
I get the root folder ID one. Something something like that. Uh, you can play around with the code. It it becomes very easy. For example, now I have this all user folder. I want to check how it looks like. Uh, on the left uh, variables, you can see uh, over here, or you can print it out in the debug console. So it gives you list of all the folder IDs uh, the user can access. So it, it becomes very easy if you want to debug and something in your code is not working fine. I have one question. Yep. Uh, so, like we see, uh, like I see that, uh, like in the REST route, uh, like where we are writing the path of the API, uh, mm -hmm. we are using some regular expressions to define like what, which type of data we are getting uh, yes. the params. So, is it necessary because, uh, like, I have developed some maps in uh, Express, uh, like the JavaScript. So, we are not mm -hmm. defining it there. So, how is it uh, like uh, different or? Are we not very verifying it from the front end, uh, like which type of data should uh, basically go to the back end? Uh, so this REST API mm -hmm. is not written specifically for the front end. Anyone can call this REST API. So if it was tightly bounded with the front end, you can do a check on the front end. But since this one is not, uh, we have to always validate everything on the back end. And using the regular expression over here makes it very easy. Uh, I don't write need to write a code uh, if this thing is not an integer, uh, because with this regular expression, it will only match integers. If it is not an integer, it will directly go to this uh, bad request controller. So it's just to ease off your job. Uh, OK, OK, got it, got it. Any any more questions? Uh, also, like I would like to ask, like how is this DAO different from the helper functions? Uh, like when would like, mm -hmm. we know that okay, this uh, this function needs to go in the uh, DAO folder or and this needs to go in the helper folder? Okay. So as the name suggests, DAO uh, is data access object. So DAO directly communicates with the database. So if you see here, there are SQL queries written all over. So whenever you want to access data from the database, it should go to a DAO. If you are just manipulating data here and there and you are using it at more than one place, it goes to helper. Okay, okay. That place yeah. And for most of the thing, you will already find some functions written inside this library. We have uh, like plugins, um, some report getters, uh, different business rules. So many things you will find here itself. <laughs> 